Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enke. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we have a couple of announcements that you might want to check out. Starting off, Blender 3.2 is now in alpha. This is uh, something that is beginning to grow as we have Blender 3.1 currently in beta. Now for those who like to take a look at some of the things that are now coming to Blender 3.2, you might want to consider checking it out as we now have some stuff that are currently under development. Now, most of the features that were teased for 3.1 might probably not make it over to 3.1 and we're looking at things like the viewport compositor, caustics and so much more and hopefully we might be seeing them in 3.2. And some things that are currently in development includes animation and rigging, the core blender itself, pipeline assets and input output, we have the platform specific changes, user interface, VFX and video, and finally the proxy removal. So the proxy has been announced as something that is no longer supported and it's quite interesting to see that now it has been totally removed. So the proxy system has been fully removed and if you would like to see more about this, you might want to consider checking out the core release notes. Now, moving forward, when will 3.2 be available? So we should be expecting the beta of 3.2 sometime in April, and the final release is going to be sometime in June. And with that said, there's a couple of other releases that we need to also keep in mind. 3.1 will be released sometime in March, which is going to be just a couple of months before we get 3.2. And for those who are currently working with 3.0, you might want to consider updating that as the folks at Blender have currently released the 3.0.1. Now the point one actually deals with bug fixes and for those who would like to see these bug fixes, there's over 40 bug fixes that have been, you know, put together. Now this is just like one of the most bug fixes that I've ever seen come to Blender as a tool. And for those who would like to consider checking this one out, I'm going to put this link in the description where you can see it. Now, something else that is also pretty impressive is the long-term support. So last week was just like a week of release, 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 as we saw the 3.2, we saw 3.1, and of course, there were also releases for the LTS. So Blender 2.93.8 LTS was released last week as well, and this comes with about 28 bug fixes for those who are currently working with Blender 2.93. And of course, if you're working with Blender 2.8, the 2.83.19 LTS was also released and of course you will be able to notice that there are 31 bug fixes that has been done. So just in case you're working with any of these tools and you'd like to get them for both Windows, Mac or on Linux, you can simply follow up with these links and you can actually go ahead and get it. Now while we talk about things that you can get, there's a couple of nice things that you probably need to know that is coming over to 3.2. Some of the things that are coming over to 3.2 includes the add, combine and separate XYZ node for the compositor. And for those working with geometry node, there is the remove dependency graph object transform dependency in some cases. And these are some of the light changes that are currently coming over to 3.2, which doesn't really seem to be a lot, but I believe lots of things will be coming over to Blender in the coming month as we are having a brand new project that is in the works. So we already talked about Project Heist, and this is a high-end cinematic experience that the folks at Blender Foundation are trying to push Blender to achieve. Now, the reason is whenever they're working on projects, they get to explore some sides of Blender that are either left behind or some parts that needs to be developed. And the main goal for this project is to challenge Blender and push it beyond its limit. Now, within this time, they're looking at creating and also developing tools that will deal with interactive PBR workflow, which includes EV, the texture painting, baking, and so much more. There is no talk about geometry node that deals with physics in this case, and would we'll probably be getting the geometry nodes for her sometime in the future. So it also makes sense to note that they've actually commenced work on this one and you can come through and check out some of the artworks that are currently available. And if you'd like to take a look at a work in progress that deals with the main character that is being sculpted now, you know, to push the idea of realism to a point, you can simply check this out as Julian has made this post public on Twitter. So this is exactly what we'll probably be getting and it looks pretty, pretty nice. I do love some of the things that we're seeing in terms of storyboard pitch, SS testing, the layer scope test as well, and in general, the entire concept. So this looks pretty nice. And of course, if you'd like to follow up with this project, you might want to consider checking out the Blender Studio every single week. And with that said as well, you can also learn lots of things from the characters that have been created in previous Blender projects. And of course, if you're a Blender Studio user, you can actually go ahead and download this project, download these rigs and start playing with them. 
And when we talk about things that you might want to also consider looking out for, the folks at Blender have released a post that deals with the VFX reference platform. So some time ago, Blender joined the VFX reference platform and this came with a couple of assumptions, you know, why should they join it? What are they going to benefit from it? And some of the things considered include, will it help Blender get adopted into big studios and will it facilitate the industry's contribution to Blender? Now, during these years that they've actually been part of the VFX reference platform, they've come to notice that certain things are probably not going the way they want. Now, this has actually caused some sort of limitation on their part, and that is why they have decided to no longer stick to the VFX reference platform and just continually build tools that they believe the Blender community would love. Now, something else that they mentioned here, which is quite relevant, is for the Blender community and ecosystem as a whole, it is more important to be able to use the latest Python version and other libraries. And they are still committed to preserve file format compatibility and to avoid library conflicts for integrations with binary add-ons. Now, this in its sense is pretty nice on one hand, because, you know, if you think about it, they're trying to use the latest and the greatest to make things work. On the other hand, this might not necessarily be the good step in the right direction. I think this is going to be like a 50-50 thing. I believe some people would prefer to get the latest and greatest and play with it. But one of the things with tools that are like the latest and greatest is most of the time, they either don't get adopted as quick as we expect them to. And some of those times, one of the considering factors is stability. And that is something that should be considered. On the other hand, Sticking with the VFX reference platform actually allows for a plain level field where different tools can integrate with Blender and at the same time, Blender can work simultaneously with other tools. So for those who like to come through and read on some of the comments here, you might actually find this quite interesting. So there are some sides are for this and some sides are against it. And in general, I just think that the folks at Blender are looking at something that would be more beneficial to the community instead of hinging the development on tools or references that might probably not get them anywhere in the future. And away from things that has to do with the folks at Blender Foundation and also with the releases that we're getting today, let's take a look at some of the things coming to the community. Actually, one of them still deals with the folks at Blender Foundation as we are getting a new Blender Development Fund member. Now, you guys already know these guys, and these are the folks from Polygonic. The folks at Polygonic have now joined the Blender Development Fund under the Corporate Bronze membership. So in case you have no idea who the folks at Polygonic are, they are the creators of Botanic, Traffic, Material League, and a lot of other Blender add-ons. So for those who like to take a look at some of the things that they've created, probably you want to check these things out on the Blender market. I'm going to put a link in the description where you can check it out. And while we talk about the Blender market, there are some add-ons that are currently available that you might want to take a look at. So if you're into motions, you like creating motion graphic style stuff, then you should consider taking a look at the motion animate add-on. This add-on would actually allow you to speed up your motion graphic design. And if you're thinking about using geometry nodes or you like to use nodes to create beautiful stuff like this, there's just a whole lot of things that this actually brings to the table. And something else that is pretty beautiful that you should also see is the Simple Sci-Fi Pro. The Simple Sci-Fi Pro made available by Chip Waters is also another beautiful add-on, you know, just in case you like to create some sci-fi stuff that deals with geometry and displacement, then this one is for you. And speaking about geometry and displacement, we have a free geometry node pipe creator. This tool is totally for free. And of course, we've made a video about it. So just in case you like to follow up with that video, you want to see how this tool works, you want to get it for free, links to that is going to be in the descriptions. And something else that is also beautiful and free is the Tessellate Texture Plane. So what this actually allows you to do is if you bring in a texture, probably a PNG texture into Blender, you can easily skin this texture, rig this texture, and at the same time, animate it. So this is something that is quite impressive. There's a whole lot of reads and things that you can do with this. And this is also going to be good for card. So in case you like to make some cardboards of certain images and you like to use them for your background, then you should also, you know, consider looking at this. And of course, if you're new to Blender and you're thinking about getting started with Blender, you know, you want to create a simple project. The folks at CG Cookie have just created the Press Start project, which is a very simple project that will guide you from opening Blender all the way to creating this beautiful stuff. So things that you get from this includes getting started with Blender, creating your first model, texturing it, lighting it, and finally rendering it. So for those who are thinking about also learning more stuff from the folks at CG Cookie, they also have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tutorials that are available on Blender Market. And one of the you know lovely ones is the human realistic portrait creation blender, which is uh, something I think you should also consider looking at. So this is more like it. And these are all the announcements that we have 
for this week. So just in case you'd like to check them out, links to these are going to be in the description. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.